Today in this video, we're going to talk about should you buy now or should you wait? That's the question of the day. Check it out. Hi, I'm Rhonda Burgess and I'm a real estate broker and mortgage underwriter here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. And my firm is Southern Living Realty Partners. First of all, let me say, hey, I know it's been over a month since I've done a video uh you know in my other life I'm a travel agent so I've been traveling I've been gone quite a bit um so I do apologize for my absence so let me get down to the question at hand because I've had a, several of y'all call and ask me this question do you think or do I think that you should buy now or should you wait um I'm gonna say this if you would have bought a house in January of this year, January of 2020, it's April. And we're talking about January, just, you know, 90, 120 days ago. Your interest rate would have been in the threes if you were getting a loan. Now the interest rates are in the fours, which is still very, very low. But do you see how you missed a whole lot of you could have paid less interest? you would have had an interest rate in the threes. Now we're in the fours. The Fed is projecting up to another seven, seven interest rate increases in 2020. Seven. Um, I will say this, you know, I've been, I've been saying you should buy from the rip. You should have bought a long time ago, but I don't see what you're waiting for. You know, I watch a lot of, I watch a lot of YouTube videos myself, and so I watch news clips from different, you know, stations all over the country. And, um, you know, I'm seeing these videos that talk about these people are getting rent increases anywhere from 500 to 1000 to $1,300 more a month rent increases. They're doing that because they can. When there is more demand than there is supply that's the american way you can set your price at whatever you want to that's capitalism okay that's that's just the american way so if you don't want to deal with these ever increasing rent prices i suggest you try to buy something i know that's easier said than done but when it comes down to the question of should you buy or should you rent continue to rent i don't see what What's enticing about continuing to rent when you have no control over your over your housing costs? You know, when you buy and you're on a 30 year fix, a 15 year fix, a 10 year fix, even even a five year arm. You know, if, if, if we're that if we're getting desperate to where we have to do a five year arm or we have to do a 40 year mortgage because the 40 years are back. OK, so if the 30 year amortization still has your payment too high, you may want to look and see if you could do a 40 year. But regardless, those are going to give you a fixed payment. The only thing that will change on those mortgages is your taxes and your insurance. If your property tax goes up, OK, cool. But I'm, I just don't see your property taxes or your homeowner's insurance going up to the tune of five hundred, six hundred, a thousand dollars per month like rent is i just don't see it so many of you come and ask me what would you do i buy something today i buy something yesterday i'm you know i'm in a i've told y'all about my daughter in the apartment at this point i am really really racing to get her ready to buy because i want her to buy before the interest rates get too much higher it's just that plain and simple. Because um, my feeling is now, if she can pay rent, she can she can pay a house, she can pay a mortgage, okay? So we, we're rushing to get her ready sooner rather than later to buy. And that's just my suggestion to everyone, uh, especially those of you who call, do it. Because the interest rate is just going to get higher. It's not going to go down. Second of all, I know 
it's hard when you're a lender, when you're paying $2,000 a month in rent and you only can afford or the mortgage company tells you you're only qualified for a $1,500 month payment. I know it don't make no type of sense. It don't make no type of sense. Because the issue that's happening now is a lot of people, your housing is 50 or 60% of your income. Whereas on a mortgage, they don't want you to be at no more than 30% or 35%. And that's the, that's the unevenness that's, that's continuing to, to play out as, you know, as more people, uh, want to, they're becoming of home buying age. Our millennials are, are, are coming of age and want to buy a house, you know, um, we've got, you know, people that are close to retirement or you're retiring and, and, and you, you want another house or you, you're looking at a house in a different state or whatever. So as the demand continues to be high, I just don't see any other way to do this because the rent is going to continue to take up 50 to 60% of your income. If it, and, and you have no control over that. It may be even higher than that, but I feel like I would buy now rather than wait. And one other thing to remember when we're talking about buying versus renting, it's all about number one, your income. You got to get your income up. You got to get your income up because as these prices go up and the interest rates go up, you have no control over that. You have to worry about the things that you can control. Okay. Cause otherwise you go crazy with this. You know what I'm saying? So, Concentrate on increasing your income, increasing your income. Okay. And at the same time, you got to decrease your debt, that debt to income ratio. You've got to make it work in your favor. You've got to increase your income, do whatever you got to do. You know, like I, you know, I, I harp on this all the time, but do whatever you got to do, whatever you got to do on the side, or you got to change your main job or whatever. You got to make more money, period. Because not only that, the inflation is going to eat. If, if you're just getting a two or 3% increase every year on, you know, in your income from working, but inflation is at four to 5%, you are on the losing end of that. You got to get your income up. Do what you got to do. Get your hustle on, but get your income up. And number two, you got to bring the debt down. Because it doesn't matter. If, if you can have the best credit score in the world. I talk to y'all all the time. Some of y'all sitting on sale 800 credit score, but your DTI is whack. At the same time you bring that income up, you got to get that debt down. That's the only way you're going to be able to really buy a house and appreciate the, the fact that you have bought a house and you're not in this rent roller coaster where the prices are just continuing to go straight up. Again, my name is Rhonda Burgess and I'm a real estate broker and mortgage underwriter here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. If you need help with finding a new home here in the Nashville area or selling your current home, we'd be happy to help you. You can give me a call. My number is 615 554 0832. Thank you. And as always, have a blessed day.